This video is made for staff at higher education institutions, so it gives you an idea of what the ECTS user's guide is about in general and also gives some very specific practical guidance on how you can design, deliver and assess learning outcomes with ECTS. ECTS is not just a tool, but the whole system. It protects the student. I think the ECTS is really an excellent tool for institutions to demonstrate that they address seriously some of the key issues of quality, namely student-centered learning and the appropriate use of learning outcomes. And I think ECTS is also a good tool and perhaps even a necessary tool to increase transparency and comparability of degrees and therefore also to have a positive impact on the trust of the quality of the programs. It helps to plan a program by giving you an orientation of what to do when First of all, stipulate which level do you want to achieve. It is, for example, a bachelor level, is it a master level? And on that basis, you then identify the various components which allow to create a pathway towards achieving the learning outcomes of the program. You then define the profile of the program. That means what should be the learning outcomes of this study program. I like to outline the example of a bachelor program in business and management. So the first step is to outline the profile. For example, should it be more research oriented? Should it be more applied oriented? Having decided on that, I also have to think about the length of the program. Because then I need as the next step to identify the pathway towards this degree. And therefore, I have to identify the various subject areas or the educational components the student should study. That could include study periods abroad. That could be work placements, laboratory work. So all of these are elements which I decide then in the designing the program of a bachelor in business and management. ECTS credits can be allocated to work placements because work placements are educational components of a program and all educational components carry credits. Well, after constituent parts of the program have been identified, then the overall picture of the whole uh, program should be outlined and then credits allocated to each of the components according to, of course, the intended learning outcomes and the expected workload. A program cannot have more than 60 credits in a year. A learner, however, an individual student, may earn many more or some less credits in an academic year. But the program is a structure, and this structure follows the lines of the key features, and that means 60 credits a year. To be appropriate, the assessment methods and criteria both, of course, need to be consistent with the learning outcomes that have actually been defined for the component, as well as the learning activities that have actually taken place. 